All I want is five years, and if you're not satisfied with me, you're free to try someone else. These are the words of Leo Henry Devines on his campaign for the 1986 elections, which he won. He never got to serve out his term because his promising career was cut short by an assassin's bullet. Born in Tobago in November 1932, Leo Henry Devines was the seventh of 13 children. Leo attended the Goodwood Primary School. He spent half of his life in Diego Martin, working his way up from purchasing manager. He founded his own company, Magley Construction and General Enterprises, and also served as chairman of the El Socorro Community Center. He said that his wanting to help his country and his people is what made him enter politics. Leo's first foray in the political arena came in 1981 when he campaigned with Carl Hudson Phillip of the Organization for National Reconstruction, the ONR, for the Diego Martin central seat. But Carl Hudson Phillip was defeated. That defeat didn't stop Devines, however, who continued his social work in the area. In the campaign for the 1986 elections, he explained that he never believed he would contest the seat but his colleagues expressed profound confidence in him, which made him change his mind. Although I never felt that I would be going up for a candidate in the national election, I spent the last two years out there with the people, sharing their problems and insisting that they be helped. He had mobilized grassroots support, which would help him significantly in his political career. He championed the cause of his neighbors in the interest of a healthier environment and a better standard of living. Devines was instrumental in establishing a booster pump on Diamond Boulevard on November 21, 1983. He made water the main issue in his campaign since 1981. With the support of his community behind him, Devines was victorious in the 1986 elections when he won over the People National Movement's candidate, Joe Lachis. Devines ran under the National Alliance for Reconstruction banner. In his campaign, he said, you don't have to ask me, just go out in the streets and the people will tell you about me. And so they did. They bared testimony to Devines as a man of his word, a hard worker, a man of integrity. Leo was sworn in as parliamentary secretary in the office of the prime minister on January 13th, 1988. He was later made minister in that same office. Devines acted as Minister of Food Production and Labor Management and was acting as Minister of Public Utilities and Land Settlement. Dr. Botiwari describes Leo Devines as an unassuming man who worked tirelessly without asking for anything in return. Sadly, he is best remembered for the circumstances surrounding his death. Leo Devines was attending Parliament on July 27, 1990. The time was five past six in the evening when gunmen from the Jamaat al muslimin stormed the parliamentary chamber, taking everyone hostage. Who is the Prime Minister tonight? The attack was brutal. The Red House was shot at and shelled. A B-300 machine gun left its mark on the ground floor in the southern end of the building. The militants also left their mark on Mr. Devines. He was shot in the ankle during the attack, was held hostage with his wounds until he was released on the following day and taken to the Port of Spain General Hospital for treatment in a TSTT van. But it was too late. At 57 years old, Leo Henry W. Devines unwittingly became a symbol of the resilience of our democracy. His portrait by Noel McNeil hangs in the Parliament chamber as a reminder that the invasion of the sanctity of the Parliament 
must never again be allowed to happen. Member of Parliament Devines wasn't the only fatality of the coup. Seven others were killed. And many others were injured physically and emotionally by the attack. The MP left to mourn his wife Margaret and four children, Alicia, Garvin, Lester and Jason. Jason would frequently wait for his father so he could tuck him into bed, a duty both father and son enjoyed. His wife Margaret said she felt incomplete with Leo gone. He would listen to gospel music on Sundays with his family. They would all go to church and occupy the same pew every Sunday at the St. Anthony's R.C. Church in Pity Valley, where his funeral service was held. In Dr. Albert Richard's eulogy, Devines is described as a stalwart in his community, steady as a rock. Richards made an appeal that his death should not go unnoticed. He said it was an agony for Leo to leave behind those whom he cherished so dearly. We will miss your presence in the house. By your heroic manner, you have ensured the continuance of democracy in this country. Leo's body lay in state from midday to facilitate members of the public who filed pass for viewing and was later cremated at the long circular crematorium. After Leo Devine's death, a by-election was held for the Dago Martin central seat. Kenneth Valley was elected as the area's new representative. Leo Devines, minister in the office of the Prime Minister, bore an assassin's bullet and accepted his destiny with dignity. Leo Devines, an outstanding parliamentary personality. All I want is five years, and if you're not satisfied with me, you're free to try someone else. These are the words of Leo Henry Devines on his campaign for the 1986 elections, which he won. He never got to serve out his term because his promising career was cut short by an assassin's bullet.